Alrighty then. It's Jack Powers. It's been about, well, I don't know, overnight. Went to bed kind of late. But yesterday at like 7.30, 8 p.m., I learned that the judge in my case had granted the motion to terminate my supervised release. And so I became a relatively free man, a, a freer man. Or you can this give poor woman was just it. sitting in a car and apparently somebody suspected her of having stolen a pair of sunglasses or some shit and she's just hanging out here when these officers approach. Yes, we do. Well, over here, we have this old dude on a bicycle that got hit by a car. He's trying to fix his bike up and just go about his merry way. What happens? Well, you're going to see what happens when over-aggressive, untrained police officers try to take control, so to speak, of this seen the situation and they automatically assume that this guy has oh, done something no. wrong what and they're really going to gonna press on here. him what and they're going to end up Tell me. Till we our banging his face and head, head against the police the car well, in fact, I was and out knocking there, him out the then you're they're going to drag him to jail what you're supposed to do. only have to have release him later on on his own recognizance and it's I thought he saw just absolute insanity and it's one of the main reasons that police officers all across hey, the United the States on, need look, to be stuff, young man. trained right, come on, come on, in man. how to be decent what human beings, i.e. Hey, character building. They need a curriculum. They need a program. Put your hands behind your back. Here he goes, handcuffing an unconscious man. Handcuffing him, searching him, not calling for medical, not really doing anything. And look at this guy smiling. Look at him smile. Look at him. Look at him. He's happy as hell that they knocked this guy out. Is this crazy or what? Meanwhile, back at the parking garage, these officers turn are trying way. to get this woman turn that way. out of her car. To step out There's of the car. There's no real crime we are conducting an or investigation. suspicion you articulated. What is your probable cause? We have reasonable suspicion. Ridiculous. She saw you this placing a black bag by the door, out. so we're going to have to conduct Watch. investigation. Turn the other way so that we don't hit your face with this saw. stick okay. when okay. I bust so out your windows. I mean, don't know that. Really? Okay, if you don't have anything illegal, then we'll be done. Over we have to check your car. We have reasonable suspicion. What? I just told you. This woman is just okay. Turn your head that way because I'm about to break not your window. wanting to interact. We will do you to the game of games. Conflict. This is a battle game. It's a game of strategy. It's a game that uses one mind to sharpen another mind. And it's the predecessor of modern day chess. This game goes back thousands of years and represents a way to advance the knowledge and understanding and capabilities of the human mind. It's unbelievable. You do not want to miss this game. It is coming soon. To a store near you. Well, you're not listening. Meanwhile, back at the car, we see the officer breaking out not only the front window, but the back window as well. I guess maybe he missed in his excitement and hit that one. But this woman obviously isn't driving some kind of a Lexus. She's in 
a relatively older model car with you know tires that look pretty well worn she's probably not doing real well financially um, but she's not doing anything and she's very reasonable I think with these officers and she's just standing on her rights she's not doing anything at all illegal or criminal or anything that would justify this kind of an aggressive approach by the police there's just nothing here period they're searching her car she's standing there watching them they're taking stuff out throwing it she's like yeah uh -huh. you know and there's no repercussions I mean they don't have to pay to replace the windows in her car think of what a what a burden that would be for her five six eight hundred bucks and she's already broke she's already doing poorly to begin with um, yeah it's just it's just an incredible thing that people way, can just call the police for no reason no these Karens or these busybodies no that have no business whatsoever making some kind of a call to the police oh break. I, I think there's a suspicious way. person doing this or doing that and I want them investigated that didn't used to be the cause of any kind of policing or police interaction with citizens. A simple call, an anonymous call, a, a call that in itself is suspicious. I mean, there must be some kind of laws or there better be some kind of laws on the docket sheets or the agendas for these legislatures that make it a crime first of all let's make it public whoever files a complaint or makes a call to the police requesting an investigation on anything let's make that a public record to hell with this anonymity okay if you want to make a call make sure that it's recorded you got a name some kind of identification phone record email something else and you know hold that person responsible if they're not reporting a crime then there's nothing to investigate if they are reporting a crime then yeah you need to go ahead and develop your probable cause outside of a simple report or allegation otherwise anybody could report on anybody and say anything at any time oh I don't like my neighbor so I'm gonna call the police and tell them that I think he's building bombs in the basement that he's a Hamas terrorist okay um, you know it's and then what the SWAT team shows up and, and burns down his house or shoots him shoots everybody inside I mean you know this kind of policing is completely unwarranted in my view and if the officers were better trained if they had better personal character in other words well it's a it's a combination here between personal character and the law they need more training in what the law allows and what it doesn't and how they themselves can be held responsible if they violate the law that's how important this is I mean they have to be trained and these attitudes of us versus them and this insular uh, um, organizational brotherhood attitude uh, um, you know I'm gonna lie for you you lie for me you cover me you protect my back I'll protect yours um, that thing has to be laid aside it's it's clearly inferior Officer to the good and the decent character cuts to his right um, hand from breaking that's crazy window. I mean this I should just put into a uh, I should just put it into a frame really I mean right here's <laughs> the, 
the relevant part of it, right? I should just put this in a frame. The court orders early termination of supervision granted. So this is it. It's done. Um, it's beautiful. The way that uh, that my PO handled this was really with with some class and some real dignity. I mean, he's he turned out I, honestly to be a pretty decent fellow. Um, even though I did have complaints, because one of the things that they were saying, they were saying that I wasn't in compliance. They were saying that I wasn't taking my UA tests. And when you're on supervised release, you have to call what's called Codaphone, and you give them the last four numbers of your social security number. Well, first of all, they had the wrong social security number for me. Um, mine was 6652, but I don't know. Well, I think I know where they got that from. It's off the bottom of one of my indictments way back in the day, but it was wrong. Um, the other thing was that they didn't have the number correct. They had 6655. So I never heard my number called. And the PO told me, you know, you don't go in for testing unless you hear your number called. So I didn't go in for months and months because every day we listened, Jane and I, to the code of phone, but I never heard my number called. So when I came to file the original motion to terminate, the probation officer said, ah, he's not in compliance. He hasn't shown up for his UA testing and blah, 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 blah. So, you know, it was just wrong. It was just incorrect. So finally got that straightened out. And I think with everything else that was, that was going on, the, the lawyers from Stanford University, the clinic, uh, the professors, the, the public defender's office coming and getting behind me and making, literally making uh, a great case for the judge, making it easy for the judge to grant this. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm off the hook. I'm off the chain, so to speak. It's like, Okay, all right, boom. The last leg of this long and arduous conflict with the criminal justice system, the federal criminal justice system, has now ended. It's gone, it's done, it's over. And I can breathe a sigh of relief and feel like a real human being now. It's gonna take me a minute, because everything that I did was sort of circumscribed. I had to be aware at all moments of, of certain, you know, certain things, because I'll give you an example. Okay, everybody, this is Buddy. Buddy is, is my buddy. He's a nice young man. And he's got a couple of tricks that he plays, though. He, he plays dead, but he lays there and his eyes are open. He doesn't know that he has to like close his eyes and he'll just lay there stiff with his eyes open. Watch, play dead, play dead. Hey, look. Hands crossed, but his eyes are open. Buddy, you're gonna have to learn how to close your eyes. Buddy's cool though.